Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like I haven't sat down and filmed in a long, long time. It really hasn't been that long, but I did have a bit of a gap between videos because I was traveling and I just was not in the mood to film. So I just don't like to force myself to film if I'm not in the mood. This is a hobby and I still want it to stay fun. So I'm sure you guys have seen videos go up about the partner program and all this jazz and I actually ended up hitting a thousand subscribers this past week which I'm really excited about and super super thankful for. So I will definitely have a little thank you giveaway go up for you guys in the next couple of weeks so definitely keep an eye out for that. And I believe I made my watch hours too so if I did the math right I should still be in the partner program because I know YouTube is making changes to its partner program so a huge thank you to everyone that has watched my videos. The cool thing about my channel and what I realized too with the changes that happened to the partner program, YouTube does care about how many people are watching your videos too and how long they're watching them for and that really is so awesome for me because I've seen a lot of small channels that have way more subscribers than me but don't have the watch hours so even though I have not as many subscribers as some other channels you guys are freaking loyal and you watch my videos from beginning to end and that makes me so happy and I really really appreciate it so I can't say thank you enough times and yeah anyway I'm just rambling now but I had bought a bunch of new products before I went on my work trip and I wanted to do a get ready with me video so here is the look this is what I filmed this is what you're gonna see it's gonna be a little bit rough because it's my time, first time coming back to filming and I'm also not feeling so well and there was a lot of makeup disasters in this video. So if you guys want to see some real life bloopers, keep watching this video. So I wanted to show you guys basically everything I do when I get ready in the morning um, because I get a lot of questions on my skin and like what products I use and stuff and I honestly think guys it's nothing fancy but I figured I'd put it in a video in case you found it useful so sometimes I use this toner I always use a toner but sometimes I use this one this is the fresh rose deep hydration facial toner and this was like really trending uh, last year I believe Jeffree Star mentioned this and everyone was hyped about it I honestly don't think I would repurchase this product again because I didn't see any like really worthwhile kind of results. Usually my go-to toners are from the brand The Body Shop and I always wait for a sale because they usually do like a really good sale around the holidays it's like buy one get one or some type of sale where you can purchase multiples. And then I just use those until I finish up and then I repurchase them again. So if you can see a few... I usually have them sitting in my background. I don't think I do right now, but I pretty much use all of their toners. And this one is in the $40 range, so I really think that you don't need this to have amazing skin by any means. But I just wanted to let you guys know it is one I have. And as you can see, I'm about halfway done with it, so it's good, but I don't think it's worth the money at all. So after I tone my face, which really takes all the grime off, I go in with a eye cream. Now, I use the Drunk Elephant eye cream. It's not in here right now because I take it on my trip with me. And I just take a little dollop and use my ring finger. And I'll just go in a little circular motion around here. Now, this is the Sunday Riley Autocorrect eye cream. And this is supposed to brighten and depuff. And honestly, for the price of this, I don't really feel like... It's doing anything super dramatic to my eye area, but I it's tough for me with skincare because I feel like you really do have to use it for a long time before you can kind of review it. So I've just had really good luck with Sunday Riley products, which is, at, which is why I continue to repurchase from them. But this one says, it instantly delivers a lifted and depuffed look while reducing the appearance of dark circles and fine lines so I don't know I feel like my under eye area I definitely do have some fine lines already down there and sometimes depending on the concealer I use I feel like it really is emphasized I feel like I've definitely started changing my mind on the Tarte Shape Tape 
I know that's a lot of people's favorite concealer. I think I have it sitting back here some at some spot. Um, and I think it's definitely one of those I think I'm going to start using up and then never repurchase again. Just because it's very unflattering under my eyes. I know it's supposed to be a creaseless concealer, but for me it is not. Um, so the next step in my routine before I do makeup is one of my face oils. Now again, these are all Sunday Riley products. And I first bought the Juno oil because this is the hydroactive cellular face oil for anti-aging benefits, radiance, and it's also filled with antioxidant rich super food oils. So I bought this first. I think I picked this up last year in the April VIB sale. And as you can see, I'm almost halfway through. I pretty much use this one every day, day and night because it gives me really nice glowy skin and especially where I live it is super cold so I like to go in with a nice hydrating oil this one is the Luna oil which is a sleeping night oil so you only want to use this at nighttime this one has a retinoid so there is kind of like a learn not a learning curve but your skin has a reaction time to this so when you're using a retinoid typically you will start breaking out first and then once your skin gets more used to it it'll soften up so be cautioned at first this will break you out and then it'll start kind of smoothening it out over the long run and then this is the flora oil this is my most recent sunday riley face oil purchase this is also supposed to be a super super hydrating oil um this has rose and rose hip and it says it's a nourishing russian turkish bulgarian red roses in a rich base of hydrating Botanicals quenches very dry skin and fights wrinkles. This one is hydrating, but I'm confused because I thought this was going to do more than the Juno oil, but I feel like the Juno still feels pretty hydrating to me. And the thing with the Flora is it smells horrible. This oil I can only really wear if I'm going to stay at home the day or at nighttime because it stinks. I really don't like how this smells. The Juno oil is fine. So I use this daytime if I'm going to work or if I'm if it's a weekend and I still have plans, I'll wear this one, but the rose one stinks and I'm so shocked. So what I usually do, because this has a, what are these called, like a dropper, I'll take a nice pump of it and I'll just put some on either side of my cheek and then just a little bit on my forehead and I'll just massage this into my skin. I like to do my oil first and then I do my eyes next because that way I feel like my oil has time to soak into my face so that's just how I do it so usually when I come on camera and I tell you guys oh I look like a rotisserie chicken it's because I put my face oil on and I don't do any like fancy rubbing motions I just kind of smooth it into my skin and this usually soaks up really well I don't feel like I have oil sitting on top of my face for the longest time I just avoided face oils because I just felt like they were so greasy I know one of the first oils that came out was the Josie Marin argan oil and I tried it and I was just not a fan of Josie Marin's argan oil but I really like the Sunday Riley oils so that is kind of my very basic skincare routine the only other thing I always like to do when I start my makeup is to make sure I never have what I want when I when I need it. Like where? Oh, here it is. So, and then the only other thing I do is I make sure I put some lip balm on so that my lips can get hydrated for whatever lip product I choose to wear that day. Usually I wear liquid lipstick, so I like to hydrate... I, I do like to hydrate my lips day and night. I always go to sleep. I use some kind of lip balm or like the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask just to hydrate my lips because that's important. So just rub those together. So that's how I prep my skin every day for any kind of makeup. And then at nighttime, it's a little bit different, but I just wanted to insert that into this Get Ready With Me video in case you guys were curious because a lot of people ask me about it online and so yeah now if you have any questions you can leave it in the comments okay guys so now on to the kind of fun stuff I've picked up a lot of makeup in the last couple of weeks and I haven't really had a chance to play with it so what I thought is I would do like a little get ready with me type video and then we will also do a haul now I was gonna do a drugstore haul and I actually did it on Instagram 
but I thought I would film it for YouTube as well since who doesn't love a good haul video. Plus I told you in my January haul that I want to do more revisited type videos so because of that I want to remember to document all the makeup I buy so I can come back and tell you guys my thoughts about it after I've used it for a while. So there's a big stash in here. I got a lot of new eyeshadow palettes. The one I kind of really want to try out is this Sephora Pro Pigment Neon Palette. And I saw a lot of people, not a lot of people, but I saw a few videos of this palette on YouTube and I did not realize, but these are the shades that are in the electric palette. I believe the popular shades, they just kind of pulled them and made it into the small palette. And this is a $20 palette and I've been really trying to get into color lately. So I was like, ooh, let me play with this guy. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to play with this palette. So I do have like the new Pat McGrath palette. I have the new Juvia's Place palette, but we'll do separate videos on those. So I'm going to put this stash right back here. Paint pot. And I've also started off a drawer of products that I'm going to try and pan this year. So I will film a video on this for you guys. But as you can see, here are some of the products I'm trying to use up in the year 2018 and I have my MAC paint pot in the soft ochre so I've made a nice big dent in this so I'm going to continue to use this every day when I do my eyes and hopefully try and use this up so that I'm just excited I want to try and pan a few things this year and this is just a tarp brush that I picked up from a set um, I want to use more new products that I have in this box, so I'm going to have to do some digging here. Give me two seconds. So to set my paint pot in soft ochre, I want to use this e.l.f. Beautifully Bare Sheer Tint in Medium Dark. So this is going to be part of my haul. I love this compact. It's so pretty and shiny. It looks so like expensive, which is crazy because e.l.f. is not a very high-end brand. You can find this at the drugstore. I picked this up at Walmart, so I'm just using this to set my paint pot. And I picked this up on a recommendation from Nicole from Young, Wild & Polish. So my eyeballs are prepped, so we're ready to use this new palette from Sephora Collection. I kind of want to go in with some neutral shades, so I'm just going to grab the... Viseart Warm Mattes palette just to like throw in like a transition color. So this is my little eyeshadow brush collection. I know I've done a video on eyeshadow brushes, but if you guys are curious, I will go ahead and link that maybe up in the cards for you guys. So I'm just going to grab a big fluffy brush. This is a Morphe E27 and I'm just going to go in really lightly with like this really light color right here and just throw that in to my crease. And then I see this beautiful orange shade, which is called Tangerine. Here it is. It's so pretty. I haven't even touched this palette. Like, I haven't swatched it. I did buy... Oh, so very powdery. So you want to make sure you dust it off. But I did try the Pearl palettes. And I actually ended up taking them back because they were very powdery. This one I picked up because it was $20. And I was, like, trying to branch out into more fun like colors so I thought this would be a really nice purchase kind of a condensed palette everyone's really into smaller palettes these days and so I thought why not let me buy it let me try it out so it's going on very lightly but it's definitely kicking up a lot of product and that's the thing with pressed pigments you guys people with the subculture there was such a learning curve because those were supposed to be pressed pigments and I don't think I know how to use a pressed pigment either because you can't really blend them you kind of have to like press them into your skin and that's just not my favorite way to apply makeup so you're probably not even really seeing this color on my eyeballs because it almost feels like it's like blending away like I can see it a little bit, but I kind of wanted it to be a really fiery orange. So it's hard because I feel like you just kind of have to place it. And if so, I wouldn't use a blending brush. I would just use like a packing brush. This is kicking up a lot of dust. I don't even know if I'm making sense with what I'm saying, but I 
think that's about as good as it's gonna get with this color so next uh, all I really wanted was to try this palette so I'm gonna try and use this blue which is a really beautiful blue color called Chris and I kind of want to put this in the outer portion of my eye so I feel like you just need to like press it on it's not you can't blend these shades so that's a little bit annoying to me because I do like to blend my shadows. It's just not my makeup vibes to press color onto my skin. So keep that in mind with this palette, guys. You're definitely dealing with something like the Subculture palette. So if you didn't like the Subculture palette, you might not like this one either. Interesting. And that's the thing too with the Jeffree Star palette, the um, what is called Blood Sugar palette. He did say his shadows are going to be pressed pigments like the reds because it's a vegan palette. And to make vegan red shadows um, without the crushed beetle in it, it has to be a pigment. So that's something to keep in mind because you're going to have to use that palette like I'm using this one very unsuccessfully this eye look is very very not good <laughs> oh my gosh it's making a lot of fallout happen and my see like you can blend it away do you see that I just like oh my gosh this is so bad this is really bad oof I kind of want to start all over again and not use this palette. Look at how much kick up is on here. So this is going to be 100% messy. This is very much like the subculture palette. So I would say if you're not into subcultures formula, you are not going to like this palette just like I am currently experiencing. So what I'm going to do is wipe this off and we're going to start over with a different palette that I picked up this week. Okay guys, so I took that eye look off because I wasn't enjoying it and I decided to start over. So I have a lot of new makeup and it's okay. Sometimes things don't work out the way we planned. Also, I totally remembered that I picked up this Milani eyeshadow primer because Emily Noel here on YouTube loves this eyeshadow primer. I've heard her mention it multiple times in Your End Favorites. So I finally bit the bullet and picked it up. It was honestly only like six or seven dollars. Um, so I don't know why I waited so long, but I try not to buy, because I buy so many eyeshadow palettes. I don't really buy a lot of other face products because I don't know, it's like I do try to finish up some of my other products, but let's try this primer too. Since I'm starting off with a new eye look anyway, I want to see what the hype is with this product. Because I'm so curious. Uh, she loves this eyeshadow primer. I've seen her use it in a lot of her videos. Grab some powder just to set it. You always want to set your primer. What it does is just makes it more long lasting. And primer, usually if you're using a primer, it's more of a paste. So putting powder on it kind of not hardens it. Sets it is really the best word for it because it just kind of smoothens it out. So let's try this palette. This is from Pixi. I've never really tried any makeup by Pixi. I tried one of the uh, highlighters one time and that was it. Oh, this is interesting. I don't know what you're supposed to do with this mirror, but um, I got this on clearance for $16. And I saw, I think her name is Wanna Makeup. Um, I will, if I remember, I will link her channel down below. She was talking about this. She does do makeup on other people, and she was talking about how she used this on her brides. So I thought, hey, why not? I'll buy it and try it out. So I'm going to go into the shade Honey Bear, which is this really pretty peach color. I really want to try and do more colorful looks for you guys, but that Sephora palette was going to make me cry. I would have gotten shadow everywhere. When you're dealing with pressed pigments, it's you have to know what you're doing. And I'm just not that kind of makeup artist. So this is the MAC 224. And I'm just using that to blend in this Honey Bear shade. Okay, now I'm going to darken up even more and go in with the shade Ping. Now this palette is definitely not like, oh, I don't have this palette. 
I just gravitate so much towards like ColourPop in that like affordable eyeshadow palette trend that I decided I wanted to try Pixie because it is another more affordable kind of eyeshadow option. This palette though is originally $24 and I can tell you right now I would not pay $24 for this palette if I had to rebuy it. I only bought it because I saw it on clearance and honestly pigmentation for me is pretty eh, you know what I mean? I did think the shimmer shades were really pretty because I did swatch them. Maybe today's just not my makeup day, guys. I'm just like really upset <laughs> with how these eyeshadow palettes are performing. That is so depressing. Like why? Why can't you be good? Like why can't you be affordable but also be good? That's so annoying. So these are also a new purchase for me. I'm trying out the brand Divina and I'm just going to use this one as a lid shade and move on with my life because this get ready with me was supposed to be very exciting but now it's just a hot mess right now so I just want to finish up this eye look and put on my face makeup and move on with my day because the neon palette really jacked me up for the day <laughs> this color though is really beautiful and unique I have been loving Angelica's channel here on YouTube. I've talked about her multiple times. She's also part of my top five Tuesday group on Instagram. But if you haven't checked her out, I will link her channel down below because honestly, she is currently my favorite YouTuber, hands down. I love her. She's Swedish. She's not overly commercial. Like she's not sitting there like trying to sell you like every product under the under the sky. Plus, she's a huge indie makeup lover so I get inspired from her I don't think I'd even heard of the brand Davina until she started talking about them and then I picked up this collection so I really like really credit her for inspiring my love of trying out colorful eyeshadows I just love all the looks that she does and here is a swatchy swatch of this color that I just put on my eyeballs and if you guys are really curious, this is the shade No Place Like Home from Divina Cosmetics. It's like a purple shade with a huge green, olive green shift to it. And it's very, very sparkly. It's a little bit messy, not too bad though. I'm just going to keep this eye look super simple, which is usually what I do anyway. My eye looks are very simple. This is a new primer from L'Oreal that I've been dying to try out. This is their Glow Lock Infallible illuminating primer and I picked this up from Walmart as well so if you guys are familiar with the L'Oreal brand they have the foundation with this blue color which is supposed to be their hydrating foundation and I also saw they have a matte um, primer as well to go with their infallible matte formula I decided to pick up the hydrating one because of course it's winter time here and my skin can use all the hydration it can get so because of that I picked this up you always want to make sure your products are sealed especially when you buy them at like Walmart let's be real I'm so sad that like people like try to test out makeup at Walmart it's like just buy the fucking thing take it home try it out if it doesn't work just bring it back don't like open stuff at Walmart because Sometimes somebody else might buy the used stuff that you just the used stuff that you just put back on the shelf and then they might catch some kind of freaking disease and then that's the end of their lives. So can you just be more cautious? I just hate it when people do that. So this primer is very glowy. I can already see it on my face. So if you have really, really dry skin, I feel like you're really, really gonna like this. There is my two cents on that. Next, I did pick up two foundations, both from Maybelline, the Matte and Poreless, and the, this is the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Foundation, and this is the Matte and Poreless Fit Me Foundation, and the shade I bought was Golden Caramel. I think I'm gonna try this one out because, again, I'm kind of a foundation snob. I use a lot of high-end foundations, so I think it'll be good for me and us on this channel if I tried a 
different foundation for a change, you know? See what happens. Okay, so I've been loving this guy. I know I've mentioned him in a bunch of different videos. It's just a nice way to not get messy with my foundation. So I like to pour a little drop on. This foundation could really use a pump, but it is also one of the cheaper foundations I found at the drugstore. I believe it was like $6. So I feel like you can definitely layer this foundation, but for me it does not feel like it's full coverage because you can still see my skin, but I don't really want anything heavy right now because I'm not feeling super well and so I don't really care to have like full, full coverage on my skin. I think the color match is good and then like my dark circles and stuff, I feel like I can just cover up with some concealer. So just kind of blended that into my skin. I would really like to see how this performs with a foundation brush to see if that makes a difference in the performance of this guy. So for concealer, I have this one by Milani. This is a little too light for me, I believe, but I figure since I'm doing a drugstore all slash get ready with me, not really, kind of, because I did use uh, Davina shadows, which they're not that expensive, but I don't know. This is just a get ready with me. It's not really a, I'm not going to title it like drugstore get ready. Yeah, so that concealer blended really well. I don't know how much coverage I'm going to get from it, but I feel like it did a really good job. So now I'm going to grab the e.l.f powder again. I'm just going to chuck this box because I was going to save it so it looked new when I like pulled it out for the unboxing, but I'm just going to chuck it. I feel like I totally forgot a brow bone highlight, so I'm just going to go in with a matte shade from the Viseart palette just so I can Highlight some brow action right here. So let's go ahead and try out some blush and highlighter. But first, I've been loving this bronzer. This is MAC Give Me Sun Bronzer. This is also one I'm going to try and pan this year. And my skin color right now is perfect for it because I'm really light right now. So that's kind of nice. And I totally forgot, I feel like I should fill in my brows so I don't look like a weirdo. So my go-to is always ABH, the brow powder in chocolate and the ABH brush. This is so old I can't tell you what, I think it's a number 12. So I think that's about it for my eyebrows. And then I'm just going to go in with the ColourPop Brow Gel. This is very inexpensive. It comes out like white and creamy, kind of like Elmer's glue, but it does dry clear. So I think for that price, it's really quite affordable. So my go-to eyeliner is the Pat McGrath Labs liner. I don't think I'm going to use any. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> What is happening? I'm, I don't think I'm going to use any other eyeliner ever again. I just tried the It Cosmetics eyeliner, the No Tug eyeliner, and that was recommended by, what's her name, Liv, from Liv Loves Her Makeup, and it's good, but it's not as good as the Pat McGrath Labs eyeliner, so I will not be touching any other eyeliner unless it's Pat McGrath, so, and then I'm just going in on the lower lash line with that same glitter shadow just to kind of give it a pop but then also I should probably put some matte shadow so I'm just going to grab some of the brown just smoking it out a little bit so this is definitely like a darker look than I intended to go for today but that's okay 
And then this blush has been like raved about. This is, what is this called? Toasted Cinnamon by Burt's Bees. And I'm gonna try and use this Sony Kasha brush, which is new. Oh God, I just took like a lot. Let's dust some of that off. Holy crap, that was a lot of blush. So you definitely wanna go light-handed with this blush. Mm, I don't think it's showing up on my skin. Or is it just me? What do you guys think? I feel like it's a little too light for me, but let me try because I also have this one. This is Bare Peach. Let's see if this one shows up a little bit better. I like swirl this thing hard in toasted cinnamon and a lot of product came out. Really subtle, guys. I don't know. I was going to try the L'Oreal, but then I remembered I actually bought these overpriced palettes from Natasha Denona. So I have the Daria. So let me just try some of that, this blush here. See if that picks up. It's a pinky blush. Oh, Lord. This one has a sparkle in it. Did not know that. And I really want to try this one. Cit Citrine has a yellow highlighter in it. So let's try that because why not? I just need a highlighting brush. Oh God, I just hit myself in the face. Okay, so this glow color is my favorite thing from these palettes. I wish I could just buy the yellow because everything else I'm not really into in this palette. I'm going to have to review this for you guys, but this palette is flipping. Like, this shade is just straight up like a sheer glitter. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. That's way too dark for me. Okay. This is very yellow. But you know what? Sometimes I feel like... This is real life. If you're a small YouTuber, this is what you're dealing with is like being sick, being, you know, pressure to film, no products, keep track of everything. I mean, it's really not easy. Maybe this look looks better than I think it does. That's what I'm going to pray for, that it looks better than I think it does. I'm done with highlight. I just need to do mascara and a lip. So let's set this face from Sephora brand. This is their Rose Hydrating Mist, and this was like seven bucks, so I was like, why not? So let's try this out. Mmm, that smells good. Very nice. Fan it off a little bit. So there it is. And then for lip colors, I did get some of the Flower Beauty. What is this called? Miracle Matte Lip. I really like this color. This is Rosewood. So let's put that on. And I love the applicator of this too. It's like a paddle. Like it almost feels like you just melted a lipstick. So this is a really pretty color, especially if you're like my skin tone. And then for the mascara, I did get, I did get the waterproof version of this guy, mostly because of the packaging. Like how cute is this? Because the... A uh, non-waterproof one comes in like the blush color and so I was like, oh my god, how cute. I have to have both. Um, but I'm thinking I should use this guy, which I purchased in one of my previous drugstore hauls and I haven't used it yet. So let's break into this. This is the Blackest Black Voluminous Fiber Mascara in Waterproof from L'Oreal. How do we use this? Let's open this up like a savage. Oh god, I stopped getting my nails done for a little bit, and now it's just like, try not to break my nails. Okay, so let's go in with step one. I've never really had like a dual-sided mascara situation. Okay, so I think I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I don't really know if I need to or not, but I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to go in with the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. This is not a mascara I would go out and buy again. But for me, it's easier to do my bottom lashes with a bigger mascara one.
Okay guys, so I'm done with the makeup. I'm gonna change and be right back with my final thoughts. Okay guys, here is the final look. I'm sure you never guessed it. It was in the intro, obviously. I don't know how else to do these things because I feel like if I come on with no makeup on, you guys are gonna be really freaked out at the start of the video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know if you have any questions, concerns, brilliant insights, etc. Down in the comments below, just leave me a comment. I will get right back to you. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with my uploads. I upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me. Um, so I hope you will consider subscribing. Again, thank you guys so much for enduring this long video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys.